looks like a fox hunt. Sorry, I forgot to push record. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry about that. Go for it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, track down indifference like a fox hunt. Um, oh, track down indifference like a fox hunt at the behest of the green knight. Striped by the sun's filtered fingers coming down through the canopy, someone asks, can we ever get out from under the shadows of everything else? Someone answers, no, and then excuse me, pushing past. Between the six foot gaps are bodies and I'm dancing, dart and weave, ending up where I started between critique and story. Yeah, that's cool. I'm hearing you playing a little bit with alliteration there uh, in a few different places. There were some F sounds and some D sounds. Um, like you're, I feel like there was some rhythmic thinking happening or some rhythmic, write, rhythmic writing happening. And in response to Dudrick, y'all? It sounds like definitely you know, lots of rhythm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what were you going to say, Laura? I, I sort of feel like I have to hear it again. I got really taken with the ending. It was sort of meta, like yeah. between critique and stories, this like discussion of narrative, but then I wanted to rehear the whole everything before that. <laughs> so. Yeah, there, there was a lot of like attention to the music. You know, I felt it like I could hear it, that you were, the words were selective in the way they sounded. But I don't know where you were, Dudry. Where, where was the, where was that coming from for you? It was just there? Uh... Well, I mean, I think that I think letting the rhythm lead me is kind of a my default if I don't know where I'm going. So, and I don't know where I'm going when you're showing me surprise pictures. So, um, so I think that was probably uh, a bit of what happened. I do love alliteration, um, and uh, it kind of happens accidentally. Uh, but uh, go ahead. Well, it sounds like then the thing that was linking all four was the way you're using prosody or the rhythm itself. Yeah, well, I like I knew that you wanted us to construct like a little like a, a bit of a narrative. So, like, uh, I I started with the the people who were crossing the street and uh, the way that they were looking away. Uh, so it's that track down indifference, and I didn't want to tie anything down too much to the, the scene of the image because I didn't know what, what was going to go next. So I just made like a literary reference. So it was like track down indifference, like a fox hunt at the behest of the Green Knight. So it's like the Sir Gawain and the Green Knight story. Um, and so they have to go on this like fox hunt and or else like hunt multiple animals. But uh, the, the, the tone of the image, like looking away from the the police line so there's something about indifference so cool. i kind of a meandering walk yeah uh, hmm. i feel like that's what lauren picked up on it was really you writing about the exercise while you're doing the exercise it was pretty cool very cool very smart it's also like a really cool exercise y'all like with you uh, with your students um i usually like to do it with, with hand with their handwriting so um to do a timed writing where they're writing about their hand as it's moving on the page, and like writing with their hand, like describing what's going on and like literally get in the detail, describe what your hand is doing. And then I used to teach in China periodically and I would do this with Chinese students. What I would do first is just let them free write with their good hand and then to tell them to continue with their off hand. And then that's always fun for them to like try to describe what they're doing with their off hand and then go back to this and then share it. And uh, some of the students when they're initially writing about their hand which is very meta, they start going off and wandering about other things. And one student I remember, he was older and he was writing with his hand. And then he started writing about how this is the same hand he held his daughter with and held her hand and started moving on to like really cool, beautiful stuff. So it was getting in that mindset of sort of like a trance, like watching themselves write and then allowing themselves to go. So writing about the exercise, but then allowing their minds to wander too. So pretty cool, my friend, meta, always nice. All right, ladies, <laughs> volunteer volunteer and then we'll you know volunteer the other one <laughs> i'm not going to volunteer people because i already did my joseph stalin stuff for the day <laughs> wednesday i can go as usual right. i 
I'm not sure if I can read my writing. It's always interesting. <laughs> we'll, we'll see that. <laughs> um, Crust walks below clasped hands. If you look straight ahead, you can pass the line of riot police um, without having to face them down. They look like they are holding masked bayonets, and though your mind tells you otherwise, your feet know differently. The shadows cast by blinds are almost as blinding as the shadow of solitudes, or the shadow of solitude that chases you even when you're standing still, masked and inscrutable as the fence that separates an advertisement for salvation from the masked crowd waiting for groceries, half filled and empty carts, patiently standing six feet apart. You do not consent to viral misinformation. You cannot inject safety, but from, you cannot inject safety from bayonet masks, but a modicum of protection from the virus, yes, as Delta is out racing the crosswalk. Cool, all right, Laura, very nice, very nice. All right, y'all, responses? Wow, oh, I, I love it. I just thought that was so cool. Um, I don't know, how fast can you write? This is amazing. <laughs> That's why I can never read my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, very cool. Dodger, any thoughts, my friend? One of the things that's fun uh, about these and sharing out is like hearing the details in someone else's writing that I remember interpreting differently in mine. And so like I enjoy that um, kind of circular thing about it. Um, yeah, it is cool. I think uh, in terms of my class, it might be fun for like uh, like a literary magazine section or a performance or something that the, the class does to like have all of the various interpretations from each kid presented before you ever see the image and then like collapse all those stories down into the image, the opposite of how it was created. Yeah, yeah, I like that, I like that. So it would be like if, uh we all presented what you wrote right now and then share it and then share the sequence of the image. And they're like, whoa, I didn't- At the end, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they all came from the same images. That's amazing. Well, Lauren, so one of the things I noticed is like, what brought it together, you did something really cool. You did the second person narration, the, the you. So that was, that was pretty cool. What was your, your thinking behind that? Really smart idea. I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know if I, I don't know if I did. Other than that, I was just talking about second parent, second person narration with someone. <laughs> Maybe that was why. But I was thinking of the guy on the crosswalk. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, like the way Dudrick was using like a, a rhythm to be the, the unifying thing between all four. I saw you that joined a point of view, which was explaining you, 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 which was kind of cool. So it's like, uh, I don't know. It's the second per the second person narration is always a kind of a weird one. I always think of it as like in between first and third person, but also like a command that you're supposed to take over. So it's a really cool choice that you had to be able to bring those all forward. And then the bayonet came back at the end too. I saw that, nice move, <laughs> pretty cool. All right, Mariana, your turn, buddy. Okay, pretty short. <laughs> all right, no uh, The mixed race couple, a real old American couple at the time of George Floyd murder it's not a time of love for the all American couple. It's a time for staring at the sun, time for face masks and food lines. It's time for Karens to hold signs, science deniers, sheep and dissenters, time for breaking up of America. Oh man, I, I, see, I see the story going there. I also appreciate the reference of Karens. <laughs> I was like, we, we need some more poems about Karens and, and raising hell against Karens, I would say. Well, hold on, Mariana. So tell, tell us, like, you had the, the idea of the, the mixed race, all American couple. So, what, what was your reasoning or what were you thinking about behind that? To me, that's what America is. You know, it's like all the races mixed together. And, but in, you know, when you think about Hollywood, it's 
you know, it's like that couple, you know, the white couple that lives in the burbs. And to me, that's just like the complete opposite of what America really is. So it's just um, so that I thought I would use that because um, that was the first thing that went through my mind. It was just like, here's the America and there is the there is the police that's like facing them. Um, you know, real American citizens. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. While, while I played that weird country song, <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> this is a, what, what a pairing we got going on here. Well, let me ask you, Mariana, like, you know, you're, you live in Washington uh, and the stuff going on with race, when people approach these subjects, how do you feel people deal with it? You know what I'm saying? Are they very well, it open? Depends. It depends, you know, like, um, well, we had like the free zone in Seattle. I don't know if you remember that. Of course. Uh, yeah. Um, so I think there's a, there are a lot of very progressive people here, who, uh, but there's also, you know, I have like one person that I know and who is from Russia who said, you know, if Putin was here, he would have put a stop to that. <laughs> and, you know, and, and so um, there's, there is a mix, I think, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm in a pretty um, um, liberal town. So over here, I don't, I, I don't hear sure. uh, many Karens, but yeah, overall. It's well, you're lucky then because they're everywhere, but let me put it this way. So the reason why I'm asking is um, because you very explicitly brought in race and one of the sort of difficulties, at least for me, not always are young people, but like is getting into conversations about race that are very critical. And sometimes using photography is a good way to do that because you can show a photograph and then maybe like Judge was saying, like step back and allow everyone to write about it and hopefully have conversations where we can, I'd say the more controversial the photograph will give you the more to write about, uh, particularly with young people. So typically what we look about, like whatever the context is right now, we can find the politics to write about. We all know what's going on right now with this Delta variant for young people they're like none of them the little bastards want to get a vaccine <laughs> i'm just like and i try to talk to all these young people i'm like are you crazy i live in arizona right now so he's like it's a whole other world y'all but anyway so things like this that are very critical to the lives of, of let's say young people that might deal explicitly with race are really useful to bring photography in and hopefully the photography will get to do some writing and that's kind of the really the essence of photo voice and why it's so useful for people who might not consider themselves writers to be able to write about a photograph and then upon reflection, maybe sharing it and someone's like, whoa, that was really good. That was really good. And someone who said, well, I'm not a writer is like, oh, maybe I am a writer. Maybe there is validation there. So really fun thing to do, especially with young writers, everybody. All right, Dudrick, yeah, having a snack. Don't worry, buddy. All right, y'all. So Dudrick went last time. And so Lauren and Mariana, we still got to do you two in a four photo sequence thing. So I'm going to let one of y'all go first. And I got this, let me actually share with this uh, Google Doc what I was thinking we can do, actually. Let me get rid of these photographs. So I'm going to top anonymous pumpkin. Hello. We'll call this uh, photo voice poetics. Um, yeah, photo voice poetics. All right, everybody. So I think last time we had uh, Dudrick, uh, Dudrick went so, and what I asked y'all to do last time, oh, I hope I spelled it right, D-U-D, Dudrick, sorry about that, guys. Um, so we had, Dudrick shared his poems, y'all may remember, and then we did some writing about them, and then what I asked y'all to do was maybe to type those up so we can share with them whatever y'all wrote up. So if you have those, we can paste those in on that Google Doc, and then what I'm going to do is also have uh, a section for Mariana and also for Laura. It doesn't need to be in this order, sorry. <laughs> and then what we'll do is a little bit of sharing, I hope. And then I'll tell you at the very end what the um, OS folks were, were thinking about for us if you all want to do any sharing of the writing that you do. So on that note, a volunteer to go and maybe do the share screen option, or we can use the Instagram option. We can do it that way. Good question. Should we copy paste? So are we copy pasting into the Google Doc? Yeah, like, yeah if you would, whatever y'all did last time that was in response to Dudrick's poems or his images that y'all wrote, and then we can put them under his section. And then what I hope to do is that with each 
when you present today, whatever stuff that you produce, we'll put under your section. And that way we'll have like a sort of like a collaborative exercise, which I want to go over. And this is kind of like the, I don't want to say the culmination, but a nice little parting gift <laughs> that we can all have. And then what I hope as well as then uh, what I mentioned at the very end is stuff that we can share some work because the OS has op offered to do a, an online publication for us if you want to share stuff about um, your photo voice adventures <laughs> or something like that. So um, sorry about that. I know I'm scattered all over the place here. Thank you so much. That was from Lauren. And so Mariana, if you can find yours, no problem, but we're going to get these going. And so of you two, is there a volunteer who would like to share with us some of your photos so we can do some writing? Sure, I can, I can do that. Um, I can share my screen. I pulled up my, um, sure. my um, Instagram here. So I can just come back to uh, share the screen if I can figure yeah, that out. No problem, no problem. <laughs> There's a little uh, square on the okay. bottom. All right, got it. Um, All right, so what I'll do, uh, let's go for Dudrick and Lauren. And Mariana too, I guess, but especially for you too. Uh, yeah, I guess Mariana, you too. You can do a little bit more writing. We already got your stuff in there, but I'm gonna time these. I think we did last time one minute each, right? I can't remember. I think we did one minute each. So I don't got any music chaired up for. Well, should I get some? Should I get some tunes? Hold on, yeah. Always gotta have the music. How about? Sorry. Dang it. Come on, buddy. Okay. Well, when all else fails. We go here, we go here, we go to, okay. All right, so I'm gonna, oh gosh, Groupon commercial. Bro, I need to go check out Groupon for a while, I haven't gone. All right, so we're gonna do, sorry everybody, one minute and I'll start the clock. All right, so you can begin and now, I'll play the Beatles. Oh, sorry. Finger in the ocean. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. oh, sorry. Uh, Mariana, we're going to do one minute of writing and then uh, if you can do oh, some. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. Uh, sorry. About okay. That. So I'm going to start the clock at one minute and then for the next minute, Mariana, I'll tell you and you go to the next photo. Does that work? Okay. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Sorry. One more time. Here we go. All right. One minute beginning. Let's go. That's some Beatles for us. Okay, photo number two. Thank you. Photo number two, everybody. Oh, is that the right one, Mariana? Is number two? Ah, okay. Okay, next photo, number three.
Okay, last one, last one. Oh, cool. start finishing up i don't know those that was not the beatles i don't know what that band was but that was not the beatles all right we can finish that one up thank you so much Marin. beautiful photographs really really pretty place wow very nice that song that that youtube quick find was not the one i was looking for all right <laughs> okay well before we go off Marianne, so tell us about the sequence about you know how you imagined it or what you were thinking I didn't really do it as a sequence, um, except it's my life <laughs> that that I live here every day. Um, uh, and it's so I think the theme for me is my relationship to what's around me. So so that and how, you know, am I a part of it or not? Am I am I, you know, accepted here or not? That's kind of the theme, I think, that kind of carries through. Okay, very cool. Very cool. Well, Lauren or Dudrick, would you like to share what you got for us? Chewing. Give me a second. No problem, man. Thank you. Very beautiful, uh, the Northwest, Pacific Northwest. My God, gorgeous. It's amazing. Yep. Highly recommend it. <laughs> Very nice. All right, well, but we're hoping we get this. Whoa, what, what, what is going on in there, buddy? <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> we have uh, we have disco lights everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's no joke. It's everywhere. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing in the parents' room? That sucks. <laughs> My parents need Yeah, I still live. I'm like 35 and I still live like I'm 16, but that's okay. Um, makes it relatable when I'm teaching on Zoom. The kids are like, Mr. Bevins, your house. What's going on? Um, okay. Uh, so from the pictures, do we still believe life started in the ocean? That we crawled on flippers into the sand or mud? I wait for the tide to come in, swallow my to toes to make me into roots and then into a tree. I think perhaps as a child, fresh from the sea of mother's belly, I wasn't emerging, but a part of something just untethered. Do we still believe that everything erodes or have we learned that silt deposits and becomes new land? Very cool. Very nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. And uh, Lauren, what about you, my friend? Should I read? So here. Yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. um, smooth stones assemble along the shore like beached whales, but stolider rock. Rock bellies turned skyward like the massive fairy tale tree gnarled with the face of an antelope, its antelope eyes watching the forest collapsing, but not the child wandering toward outstretched umbrella leaves. These stone steps receding, roots can grow over a void, linking the open mouthed cave. All right. Very nice, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, Mariana, you got two different responses from your photographs. What do you say? Oh, I, I, 
they're both just things that I've I've seen but um, didn't write about. But I love I love the the variety. It's just um, yeah, um, I could relate to both. So yeah. It's pretty amazing. I felt like that too, because I was like, as you both read, I'm like, wow, it's almost like you're there. <laughs> like the both of you, the details were, were yeah, incredible. And then Marianne, you're like, those details r- rang true to you. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, what do, I guess one of the cool things about this is like, that's what photo, photography is one form of communication for you to communicate something for us. And then this is like the return that we give back to you that you first instituted so it's like it's a return then because the photographs were already beautiful and it produced beautiful responses so i think that's pretty cool very cool pacific northwest gotta love it although it's been really hot up there too right y'all got like really like a big heat wave we did a couple of weeks ago and damaged a lot of things like lots of plants and trees and stuff but now it's back into cooler, cooler okay. temperatures yeah. cool well, good stuff to take photographs with. You got a lot of places to go, like do some nature and really like the, the question you said about whether or not you belong, that's that's always a sort of a, a big task to figure out. And maybe think, you know, using photography to figure out what that could feel like for you could be a cool place to really begin and then hopefully jump through, through some writing there. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. So, um, yeah. Great, I'm glad to hear it, glad to hear it. We'll keep on posting with this one. All right, Lauren. Your turn to dazzle us with some photography. <laughs> I have a problem that I don't remember the password oh. to this Instagram account. <laughs> How do you know what to do? Hold on. Do you have uh, photographs like on your computer, like for you can share that way? Or I can uh, look If someone else can look at it, because yeah, it's on the TV Poetics tag, it's just that I can, I can only access it on my phone because I'm not logged in. <laughs> hold on, let me see here. Oh, wait. Uh-huh. All right, hold on. So we saw that one. We saw that little baby. Wait, this is one. All right. Okay, hold on. Here's Lauren. All right, Lauren, where do I begin? The cat? Oh, still there? Oh, <laughs> um, there was no real narrative, but the earliest one is at the bottom. The earliest one at the bottom. So the books. Okay, yeah. no. hey, there's, there's that cat. See that cat. All right, everybody. So we do the same thing. So uh, should I do these four, Lauren? Does that work? Or do you have it somehow organized differently for four that we could do? That's fine. Those are the first four. So. First four? All right. All right, everybody. We got some. We're going to have some cat, even. cat poems, everybody. Cat poems. All right. <laughs> Hold on. Let me. Uh, I'm not going to use that same track. You know what? I found some better Beatles tracks. Oh. The Greatest Hits album. This is not going to be like I did last time, right? Okay, everybody. So, oh, sorry. Brought to you by H&M. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Ritz crackers. My, my phone is screwed. All right, everybody. So we're going to do four one-minute ones. I got a track. Yet again, the Beatles. <laughs> Never mind. Let's scoot this one. All right. So you got one minute. And then we will go from there. So have at it, everybody. One minute. Ooh, just Beatles version is bad too. Okay, we're going to photo number two. Books. <laughs> Good.
Okay, here comes photo number three. Okay, get ready, y'all. Last photo. <laughs> this cat. Here we go. One minute, one minute. finish up y'all and i'm gonna hit end on that track and close this screen cool thank you everybody lauren thank you for your photographs all right so before we do that just uh like ask mariana before lauren what was your ideas with, with some of these photos or what was the uh the vision you had with those first four well, I think like I said that the question of like the assignment being about community was challenging for me because I had relocated during the pandemic and I was like, I don't really have a community here except the community of my apartment <laughs> and my cats and my books. Um, so it like the totally solo isolated last 14, 15 months um, became, I suppose, the community. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, that's a... Huh. Thinking about like a photo voice project about like uh, pandemic about social isolation that would be yeah how different people have that done this which I feel like I heard something on NPR that was about this but they were like audio uh, portraits or something but thank you all right well Dudrick Mariana one of you two like to share first Thank you, sir. I built my house for the cats. Nothing but books and sun, a catalog of what I can remember and the cats can scratch their necks on. Memorabilia from a past the cats can't understand. But perhaps they don't need to. Maybe they built the house for me, nothing but books and sun, a collection to keep us warm in our shared silence. Very cool, very cool. I like that you turn it around and you know, the cats are really the owners here. <laughs> cats are always the boss, it's true. Mariana, what about you, my friend? Myself off mute. Um, give me all the books and the familiar smell of old printed paper so that their spines can explode into miracles, into flowers, into pages of poems, and far away from DSM-5, walls that kept me and opinions of all. The cats don't have, um, sorry, the cats don't share opinions. They shed their fur and affection. I accept with a smile. Ooh. You get that part you read about the explosion in two words, that part about it's, it's, uh, the spines of books I, um, ex 
So the spines can explode into miracles, into flowers and pages of poems. Very nice. I like that one. That's a good, that's a good construction there. Very cool. Very cool. Exploding flowers. Very nice. <laughs> well, so Lauren, you got a couple different responses here. Did that sound a little bit like your isolation? Not really. <laughs> It sounded a lot more um, positive. <laughs> <And> <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. More hopeful. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I know. I know. It was uh, well. Your, yours was a little bit difficult because we we're like trying to get snapshots of what we think was going on inside those notebooks. That's what I was thinking. Like I saw the notebooks. I'm like, I want to know what's going on inside all those notebooks. But well, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, for sure. Well everybody so we're about done so what i was hoping to do with this google doc which i could have did this, set this up a lot better earlier is uh, i was talking to la who's you know, the, the boss for operating system and liminal lab so this is part of liminal lab and i think in the future the os might be taking a little bit of a break from publishing but doing more labs like this and also more publishing stuff so i was a part of this os cohort and i have a book coming out next month where um, we sat down and learned how to use all the desktop publishing and like that, that the publishers use and it just it was really enlightening for me so i was talking to la earlier and i was talking about this class and how great it's been to be able to meet with y'all and like explore and practice the writing stuff and they said uh, well if y'all would like to share one something that you made out of this class they have a website uh, and what we'll do is we can like i don't know just put it together and we can like you say it but uh i forget how the best way she put it but either way publish whatever you write something from this class that you want to show and it'd be like it'd be a publication it'd be online and have your name attached to it and hopefully it'll be like um I don't know, show some folks about what you're able to do and then hopefully um in the next iteration get more folks who might be interested and definitely keep you all part of the loop because the os and liminal lab are like pretty cool and the classes they offer are like some pretty cool people so I hope you definitely take a few more, but I'll throw that out there, see how you feel about that. And what we can do is we can work from that Google Doc or um, whatever y'all just typed today. If you could type it up and then we can put it under the, the respected person uh, place. You can maybe, if you want to use any of the language that folks in this class might give to you. So you give us, you give us your photograph. And hopefully this language we can give back to you and you might be able to use. And generally what I like to do in the last class is something like this, where we do a group writing project. Usually I have uh, students bring in one photograph that really means something to them, sit in a circle and pass it around to your right, along with a piece of paper. So by the very end, everyone's written about this one photograph. You have all everybody else's words and your photograph. So I had one student a few years ago where he was older than me, but his daughter had passed away in a motorcycle accident. So we had a photograph of him and his daughter when she was really young. And then as they passed around and asked people to focus on the details, when he came back to him, he had this beautiful rendition of all these people's words about his daughter and him. Of course, he was tearful. So it was kind of nice to be able to share words with other people. That way they might be able to use your words too. So that's where that was supposed to go. It's a little bit weird doing it digitally in person. Maybe it makes a little bit more sense. Um, but as you all see, I think Mariana said, it's like sometimes people will bring you there without ever even really being there which is kind of a cool thing with photographs and, and language. <sighs> is that it? I think I got it all. I need some more caffeine, y'all. I'm dying. <laughs> so, you know, we're about done, everybody. It's been really cool seeing you all for these few weeks going for four weeks then. <laughs> we had this one weird first week that was a disaster because that's how I generally roll. Um, but anyway, y'all, it's been really cool to see you all. I hope we stay in touch. Um, if you don't want to use your Instagram burner anymore, you use your real one we can stay in contact that way and by all means you have my email so send me an email anytime I'm happy to uh, go any extra if you have any questions about exercises we did here that you want to use for your students definitely reach out to me we'll go over them or if you have like any other ideas happy to do that as well but other than that y'all i've been appreciating this i know it's been y'all been very flexible but this has been something for me to be looking forward to in these really shitty weeks so i appreciate that from y'all thank you it was fun yeah any yeah. final thoughts with y'all I love that closing exercise. I might do that. Yeah, I wish I would have been able to get this shit together myself, but you know. <laughs> but it's really the, cool. the you, classroom uh, you're talking about seems really cool. Those students to basically bring in some a photograph that really is special to them, really matters, and then have them write a little bit about it and share it, and then have it goes around in a circle. And at the very end, it's a pretty cool exercise, and they get to know each other because it's a very special photograph, and they share that. And they're like, 
It's pretty fun, pretty cool. Well, all right, y'all. Enjoy your Wednesdays. I'm going to go get some coffee and do a little bit of writing now. And I hope you all uh, have a good rest of your summer and stay safe, all right? You too. Lovely meeting all of you. You too, y'all. Meeting you all. Great meeting you too. Okay, y'all.